You have likely seen the 333 Style Challenge on TikTok and Instagram and here on YouTube. Today, I am going to modify that a bit. Let's see what we can do with just a limited number of pieces from my wardrobe and how many outfits I can put together with those. Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome, I am thrilled that you are here. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today, we are going to talk about how to take a few pieces from your wardrobe and make a lot of outfits. If you're new here, I will just explain that I'm a style and mindset coach. What that means is that I help women create wardrobes they love wearing by paying attention to all the style stuff and also by looking at how they think and what their thoughts about their clothing and the whole process of getting dressed might be doing to sabotage how they actually look and feel in their clothing. If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, you can book a one-hour free consult call. There is a link down below. We'll hop on a call. We'll chat about what's going on with your style, where you're struggling, where you could use some help, and then I'll help you make a decision as to whether or not style therapy is the right fit for you right now. So haven't found those yet, but I will keep you posted. I would, all right, now if we take off this shirt, let's see what else we can do here. I mean, the reality is basically I'm going to make all the same combinations I made with the pale jeans and I'm just going to show you what they look like with the other pants. So if you uh, can figure that out on your own, then you can skip forward. Um, okay, so certainly I have worn it with this. I wore it with this in Norway actually when I first purchased it. Uh, so I like it with the little camisole underneath it for warmth and just it feels good against my body. I also like this little um, sheer sweater by itself without a little camisole underneath it so I'm good that way. Flat shoes, sneakers with the lettuce edge. If it were warmer I could just take off or do a no-show. It's not that I have to have the sock but right now socks are having a moment so I could. I could easily put the blazer on with it. Simple. I could add the scarf that really goes with everything in my closet ever. Never had a scarf that's been quite so versatile. feels a little more like suiting and I could do it with the flat if I were going somewhere where I wanted to be a little more elevated and have a real shoe on or easily walk through a city, you know, hang out in the sneaker and be really comfortable. Let's see, I could add the layers, the necklaces again, easily layering these on again for some interest and put the chambray shirt on. As I mentioned before, this is out of my wheelhouse. This is not where I normally go to. I would go to a cozy knit sweater or a structured blazer before I would put this on together. And yet I know that it looks nice. I have lots of clients who wear combinations like this and look incredible in them. So it's not that this doesn't work. It's just that it doesn't feel quite as much like me. I'm not sure why, I guess it feels a little more like an artist's smock and I do not consider myself in any way artsy. So if I'm completely honest, that's I think where it falls apart for me. And yet I do think it's, it's a great shirt. It was thrifted and it's comfortable and I love the blue and I think it's great with both the sneakers if I wanted to wear it casual or with the flats if I wanted it to be a little more dressy. So I think it works. It's just, I'm gonna have to maybe warm up to that idea. I just have not, I don't usually wear uh, shirts as a third layer. It's not that my clients don't. I certainly give clients the option to wear a button down shirt as a third layer because for some women it's really authentic. It's just, I usually don't gravitate toward that. However, this little try on might be changing my mind about that. Okay, so let's see what's next here. I could certainly do the plain white t-shirt. I don't even know that I need to try that on. Same deal, plain white t-shirt. I could do it with the scarf. I could do it with the blazer. I could do it with um, the cardigan super clean, simple, all the way through either shoe, you know, right in my wheelhouse. And let's see, I could definitely do it the same way I did it before. Open like this, I could roll it up in the back, tuck in the camisole all together, or not really. Um, roll it up in the back and uh, go from there, you know, wear it. Yeah, I'd probably get rid of it so I'll tuck it all the way in, all the way around. But I could easily do it like this, just for a little more interest. I could certainly button it all the way up and tuck it in. I could button it all the way up and put it on with the cardigan. Just for the sake of explaining myself, this feels a little more authentic to me because the collar doesn't feel like it interferes the way it did with the structure of the blazer. This collar is pretty soft and just kind of drapes. This sweater just 
you know, has a, a nice open V. So this feels a little more comfortable. So much so, in fact, that I have a different cardigan and a couple flannel shirts that I wear when I work from home that feel just like this combination. I usually pull the cuff down so it's exposed. So that you could see it with the cardigan. I like this combination. And though this is a woven with a sweater over it and it could be a little lumpy, this shirt hangs really nicely and I would have no problem wearing these together. I could certainly put on the scarf if I need another layer or need more interest. Next thing I'm gonna do, this is gonna be a little wild. So I am not someone who hacks things, but let's try something for the sake of argument. Wrap the shirt across and not button it and tuck it in. I am not a hacker. I do not hack my wardrobe pieces. I, it's too much work for me. I'm just too, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I kind of am with style. I, I want my wardrobe to be simple and I do not want to have to think about doing something strange with my blouse to make it more interesting. I just want to get dressed and be done. And I could easily do a little, you know, a little of this and create a little more interest if I wanted. And I would probably take the camisole off so that it felt a little bit dressier if I were going, you know, kind of out for the evening and maybe had a black bra on or something. I could do this askew buttoning and whether I left the sleeve down or whether I rolled the sleeve up, feels a little more dramatic, has a little more interest that is different than, you know, the norm, the normal way I would wear this shirt. And again, I would do it so that I didn't have the camisole peeking out underneath um, and just had a bra on underneath it or something. It just feels, you know, certainly a little more interesting than your typical button down chambray. And if I were trying to elevate this, I could put it on with a flat shoe. I could put it on with a little heel and any one of the pair of pants that I brought and have that feel a little more elevated and a little more interesting. And so I would be willing to try that hack. That is not one that I usually do in my real life, partially because I usually have on a knit or a blouse that doesn't require that. But a traditional button down, if I were traveling and I needed to be able to elevate something and create an outfit that felt a little bit different, I could easily do that. I'll take off the shirt so we can see what it looks like. I took off the camisole just so I can, for myself, decide what I think and to show you. And by rights, probably this shirt should be even a little bit larger. I think this works pretty well when um, the shirt is very oversized and this shirt is oversized, but not hugely oversized. So, um, however, I, I actually I actually do think this is kind of cool. So maybe I now I'm a hack person and I've just hacked one piece of clothing in my wardrobe that I would wear a new way. So I would tuck this in nice and tight and then I would just let this drape be. And, I do actually think that I could wear this and be very happy in it. I'm very comfortable in it. I think it adds a little bit of drama and a little bit of interest and a little bit of detail that a traditional button down, especially a chambray button down, doesn't have on its own. Chambray button down is not something most people think of as something you would wear out to dinner or that is um, more of an evening or a formal or a dressy you know, kind of piece. Uh, it's pretty much a, a workhorse and is usually worn during the daytime. However, given this capsule that I've created, if I were traveling and I needed to look a little dressier in the evening, certainly I could wear this sheer um, sweater. I could wear the white tank top. I could wear the camisole. I could wear the lace blouse. But if I needed yet another, even during the day, it's not that I couldn't wear this during the day, but if I were trying to make something look and feel a little dressier, I guess you know, this, and, and then with the chains, these might both be too long, honestly, by rights, um, and they're cold. However, uh, I could add some jewelry that would take up a little more space on my skin there and uh, provide a little bit more interest still. So I might actually be a hack person now, at least this hack. That worked for me, it was simple. I didn't have to do anything too extravagant or over the top. So I hope maybe you also will try this, kind of wrap the big shirt and see what happens. Jeans are by Pilcrow, which is an anthropology brand and they are probably five years old now. And as you can see, they have a bit of that barrel shape that right now is super on trend. And I remember when they first came in and everyone really being a little um, confused and uh, apprehensive about this new shape. And for me right now, I will probably in the spring move 
deeper into the barrel jean trend because I love denim and I'm good with trying some different shapes. However, for me, for right now, they give me a little bit of that without feeling too contrived or too trendy or too kind of over the top. So, and they're really comfortable. I've had them, they were comfortable from the beginning, but I've had them long enough now that they've broken in. They've stayed nice and dark, which I actually like also because they add a little bit of interest, especially during travel. If I were to have the green pants and the pale jeans, these add a different look, which is nice. So I would easily wear them and have with this and again, either of the shoes that I have on could leave it untucked. If you know me, you know, I'm probably going to front tuck it just like the way it elongates the legs and gives me a little bit of a waist. I would do it with the flat in a second. I would do it with the um, little lettuce edge sock and the um, sneaker. I haven't tried on this flat with the sock. Socks are everywhere right now and I'm a firm believer in warm toes. However, I don't know that I would do this because some part of me feels a little bit like a third grader when I put on socks with shoes. I have worn socks and loafers. It still feels a little weird to me. My guess is through the spring I will venture into the socks and loafers thing and keep wearing them. I wear them with my Oxfords and my um, lace up kind of menswear inspired shoes. No problem. They feel great with those. The loafers, when they're a little more exposed, I don't know, feels a little more private school to me and you know, juvenile and I'm leaning into it because this is a trend that I can get behind. However, I'm just not sure. It's not that I couldn't. And honestly, if I saw a woman in the socks with this loafer, especially with it or with this flat, especially with this outfit, I probably would think it looked cool. I'm just not sure I would do it. So I'll leave them on for right now for the sake of argument. And it would also depend on the weather. Um, if it were you know cool enough that I really needed a sock, it's not that I haven't been known to add layers that maybe don't look the best just in the name of being warm. Uh, however, so I could easily do the blazer over top of this and again with the scarf and feel you know very much like myself. And the thing is that while it might seem Okay, all those outfits look the same because they are the same three tops, three bottoms, three kind of extra pieces and two pairs of shoes. So by rights, they kind of do all look the same. They do all look a little different and all looking the same is not a bad thing because this is my, my comfort zone. This is my sweet spot. Navy and white stripes and um, olive green and denim and camel and cream, that is really the happiest place for me when it comes to getting dressed. It does not have to be the happiest place for you. You can absolutely be really bright colors. I just worked with a client who wears, you know, really great jewel tones, the most beautiful royal blues and reds and gray and white, white, not cream that I gravitate towards. And those combinations look amazing on her. They're just not ever probably gonna be enough a part of my wardrobe and enough of my comfort zone that I would choose to have only those items in my wardrobe or pack only those colors and patterns for travel. But just because this is what I gravitate towards and I'm happiest making outfits with, this by no means needs to be. It could be yellow, you know, mustard yellows and rust colors and browns and, you know, any combination will work for this kind of capsule. You just need to make sure that it actually is cohesive in the color palette as well as the way the layers work with each other. If I'm going to do the wear it open as a jacket, I could easily do this with the blue jeans. Denim on denim does not scare me. Don't let it scare you. Totally cool. Ideally, you want a little bit of a, I guess you either want them to be, and I say ideally because it doesn't really matter. There are no rules. You do what works best for you and what you love. Ideally, I guess I like it when there's some contrast between the two colors of denim, when either the pants are really light and the shirt would be a little bit darker, or the pants are really dark in this case and the shirt is a little bit lighter. I just like it when there's a little contrast. I don't mind it when the colors match pretty well, when it's you know kind of the same hue of pale denim or dark denim or medium denim. I just don't really have denim specifically jeans that are this color and I wanted to be able to wear this in a variety of ways and I like the contrast so for me it works better to have darker denim and lighter denim and this mid-tone um, chambray shirt I don't love the really dark chambray shirts or the really light chambray shirts because I really only want one chambray shirt in my closet if I were someone who wore a chambray shirt often and loved wearing a chambray shirt which I guess I might be now that I've learned how to hack my chambray shirt uh, 
I might want them in a bunch of different colors. I might, I might want really pale, almost washed out white looking, and then a lighter blue, and then a mid blue, and then a real dark blue, and possibly a gray or a black chambray as well. However, for me, this one serves, you know, the purpose that I need it. I could tuck this all the way in. I could leave the tail hang out either way. I could tie it in a knot as I did with the other looks. Uh, this one just works. And I could put the cardigan over top of it. Again, creating basically the same looks. I've just changed out the pants. And then I could easily wear these dark denim jeans uh, for something a little bit more formal. You know, if I needed to be a little more dressed, I could easily put on the blazer. I would take off the sock at that point and put it on with the flat shoe. Or if I were bringing a third pair of shoes, I don't really wear heels, but I could do something maybe metallic or black with a tiny little bit of like a kitten heel or something that was a little bit strappy. And again, I could slip on um, the longer necklaces just so I have a little more interest in the outfit. Makes it feel a little, a little bit dressier and a little bit more special. But I like the navy blue blazer with the dark denim jeans because it feels a little elevated. Again, I would do the flat just for a little dressier. Although I have no problem with the sneaker. Uh, it's just that if I'm going to elevate it and kind of dress it up with just the camisole and the blazer, I'm probably gonna wear the dressier shoe. This is just the plain t-shirt. I've taken off the camisole, so I don't have that on any longer. Uh, I could easily do the cardigan over top of it as a layer with either shoe open or closed and front tucked like that. Definitely do the scarf that goes with everything over top of it. With this one, I would in fact wear this over my shoulders. So this tied over my shoulders as a layer and as um, a piece that has a little more, in, you know, adds a little more interest to this outfit makes much more sense to my brain. I would even put the cardigan on and then tie this over my shoulders because if it were cool enough and I wanted to wear the layer, I could in fact very easily put this sweater over top of this t-shirt. I have none of the bunching. I have a neckline that complements and works with the neckline of the sweater. The sleeves hang nice and lean and simple. I can kind of zhuzh things a little bit I'm using my mirror here to figure out where the neckline is. I could front tuck it. I could, again, put the cardigan on over top of that. I could put it on with the scarf because I like the way this pattern and the stripes look together. But this I would wear together. So to me, wearing this stripe around my shoulders when it's warmer with this plain t-shirt makes sense because it's practical and when it gets cool, I can and would very easily layer these two pieces together where when I had on the blouse and I had this stripe tied around my neck, I might have liked the way the look you know, presented itself, but there was no practicality because I'm not ever putting this over top of that. So I just say that so that you can understand why sometimes you might hesitate with a look. If you have that sense of practicality, like I do, you think, well, that's just like for a magazine shoot. Like that isn't actually practical. You're never putting that sweater on over top of this because it actually doesn't work. I could also tie this sweater around my neck with this on and kind of pop the collar and tie it around my neck. But the same is true. I probably wouldn't put this sweater over top of this shirt, yet I would put this on and then put this shirt on over top of it. So I could very easily, if these three pieces, this plain t-shirt, I kind of like that white popping out of there. If I had this plain t-shirt and this um, sweater and this as three pieces that were headed out with me during the day, I could have this shirt on over just the white t-shirt and I could have the blue and white stripe tied around my neck. I could have this all buttoned up and front tucked and the blue and white stripe tied around my neck. And then if it got cool, I could easily change it to look like this. I could put the stripe on so that it was on my body and I was warmer. And then I could just put the shirt on as a layer over top. And then honestly, if it were cold enough where I needed more layers, I could put on the cardigan, pop the collar. I'm probably not going to need to do this. You know, the, the reality is I would have a coat on and you know, I wouldn't probably need to layer all of these pieces together, but I could, there's not any reason this couldn't be the combination that I would wear. Like I said, I probably wouldn't need to. I would have left this home and worn this instead with the stripe over my shoulder until I needed to put it on. But I'm just showing you how all of these pieces can layer together and how there might be a few exceptions that don't play as nicely and make it feel like it's harder to make combinations that work. And 
that is kind of the, the magic of learning how to build a wardrobe that functions at the highest level for you so that all of the pieces work together, whether it's because the colors work together and also the fabrics and the textures and the shapes, like that's the dream, that's the ideal, is that the pieces in your closet all play nicely together enough that if you need to pack, you can take a few from each category and they're going to work together. And I say that knowing that if I were to expand this, if now my trip, my pretend trip that I'm going on was going to be another few days and I needed to add some things, I could use all of the pieces that I already have shown in the ways I showed and I could then pull in a couple more pieces and create even more outfits. For instance, I could, bring in these pieces. I could bring in a red cardigan. The red cardigan would go over exactly what I have on. It would work with this. It would work with this. I could layer it with the pale jeans or the green pants and it would still work. The same is true of this skirt. If I needed something a little dressier, I could absolutely wear this pleated skirt with this horizontal stripe. I love pleats, I love stripes. Sometimes there are combinations that feel a little messy and it just doesn't work. I would actually have no problem with this. This one doesn't feel like it doesn't work to me. I would easily wear this skirt with the striped top that I have on and with the flats or with the sneakers. If again, I needed to bring in a few more pieces that would extend my options, the same would be true of adding two more pairs of pants. I don't think this would ever be necessary, really, but I could add a pair of tan pants and or a pair of cream pants and just keep building with the pieces that I have in this capsule to extend the capsule and create more outfits. I could wear these tan pants with the red sweater and the camisole. I could wear the tan pants with the red sweater and the chambray shirt <laughs> or the white shirt or the um, white t-shirt that I have on underneath or the stripes. There, It just keeps, it's like math. It just is so much fun to continue seeing how you can build and how you can um, keep using the pieces that you already have in new ways as you introduce one or two new options. I could, if I didn't want to do the tan pants, I could do the cream pants. I could wear those with the um, stripes that I have on. I could do them with the chambray. I could do them with the cream. I could do them with the navy blazer. I could do them with the cream blouse. So I just want to kind of drive the point home that However you choose to interpret a challenge such as the 333 challenge or any other kind of capsule that you're creating, there is a way to make only a few pieces turn into a whole lot of outfits and there is a way to do it so that it really feels good and authentic when you're wearing the pieces and there's a way to do it where you have all your favorite pieces maybe but none of them layer and work together. If I had you know, multiple blouses that didn't have collars or sleeve lengths or fa weren't fabrics that layered easily, then the whole game is off. Then nothing really looks and feels cohesive when I go to build the outfits. And then it's a capsule that just doesn't support the life that I live or the travel that I'm you know, going on. So uh, I hope that that is helpful. I'm, I actually am going to wear this combination this week because with the dark denim and the two layers, it feels very springy, but it also feels warm enough with the two thin layers that I could be comfortable in the weather as it is now. And as it gets warm in the afternoon, I could, as I showed, take this off and layer it over top and just tie it around my shoulders because the functionality is there. I know I can wear it over top and I know I can layer it over my shoulders. So I hope that that has been helpful for you. I would love to know anything that you have um, discovered as you've watched me kind of work through these pieces and put them together in new ways. And I'd love to know if you do hacks. Like, do you, you wear big shirts crossed over and buttoned? Do you, you know, have a favorite style hack that you use that you've learned somewhere and you want to share with me? Because I might be a convert. I might be headed out somewhere and wrap my um, button down and button it askew and go from there. Be like one of the style influencers out there. Uh, that's all I got for today. If you are interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, Style Therapy is my signature program. And the most important thing about Style Therapy is it helps you develop the style self-trust to be able to get dressed and look amazing and feel amazing for anything. Style self-trust is the piece that is missing when you are struggling in your wardrobe because 
you maybe know what to do, but you're not doing it because you don't trust yourself to do it. You may feel like you have absolutely no idea how to solve what's going on in your wardrobe, but it's because you don't even trust yourself to look for the answer. Style therapy helps you build style self-trust so that you can forevermore just know what actually feels authentic for you and where to find it and what to purge and edit out of your wardrobe when your wardrobe is feeling a little um, not supportive of the life that you live. It, that style self-trust piece is the most important thing and that's what style therapy teaches. So if you're interested, I offer a one hour free consult call. You can book that down below. I hope that you have a really beautiful week and I'll see you next Friday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now I'm ready to travel. Where am I going?